Hi everyone, CG Seb here, and we are back for part two of the industrial generator tutorial. Uh, in the first part, we did the modeling, and in this part, we're gonna use a Fluent Matalyzer to texture the model. So if you don't have the model, uh, the Blender file is in the description, so you can follow along the tutorial. Uh, also, if you don't have Fluent Materializer, you can find the link in the description. So let's go. Uh, so we have our model, so make sure that the add-on is enabled in uh, the Fluent, uh, the Blender uh, preferences. So we can start properly at the same point. So add material uh, to your object and assign it also to the base of the generator. We're gonna press F and choose the three layer shader. Uh, first, I'm gonna change the color of the first layer and make it something like green, like uh, the army, army color, military uh, green and make it a little bit more rough. Uh, so we have the base of the paints and what we need to do is add some imperfections. So on the right, you have a Fluent a tab and you select Normals and Crack it Paint it. And you plug the Normal into the Normal of the first layer and the color variation map to the color variation map of the node. We're gonna make this a little bit larger so we see what we are doing. Uh, I'm using node render so I can just click and shift control uh, to change the visualization. We're gonna visualize the color variation map so we see what we are doing. And we're gonna change the um, coverage to make it uh, a little bit less present. Um, to see the cracked paints, it's actually the settings that you see here, uh, and then you need to tweak it until you get like a realistic result. So I think this looks good. Uh, if the normals are too uh, heavy, you can lower the strength in the bottom here, and here we have like a middle part that you can see here in white and this is where we're gonna see the metal uh, behind the paint. So you have the paint and sometimes the paint is off and you can see the metal uh, beneath it, below it. So this is what the mask does. And so to change the setting of this, uh, you, you can go to the mask view with control shift click and uh, the, the, the metal part will be handled by the second layer, so this one. Uh, we're gonna make it metallic and something like gray and a little bit more rough so it's not like too shiny. Okay, so you, you can see the, the hole in the paint a little bit at multiple places. Uh, you can actually change the settings. If, for example, here it's too big, you can actually uh, make it smaller or bigger depending on the settings that you want with the whole size um, settings here. So that's pretty good. Um, now that we have the basic of the uh, paint, we can check everywhere and make sure that we are happy with this basic paint cracked. Uh, we're gonna play now with the variation color so you can shift click to verify it and to see it uh, you can shift uh, control click and we're gonna play with the value, saturation and U and as you can see here, the color has changed. And this is where the color 
variation map is acting. Uh, so if the colors are too flashy, you can just lower the saturation and play with the the U and the value. If you want to change uh, the color, it's gonna be the U um, U setting, and saturation will be the intensity of the, the the color, the saturation of the color. So I guess we have something that is pretty cool here. Uh, yeah, we're gonna control shift click on the principal shader to have a global overview of what we just did. And we have a nice base color. Uh, so it looks a little bit too perfect. So we're gonna use the imperfection and dent it all. Um, we're gonna plug here the normal and we're gonna plug the mask here. Uh, the problem is that if you plug the mask of the dented into the mix layer, we don't have the mask of the cracked paint anymore. So we need to mix them together. So to do so, you press F and choose Matte Lighten. Lighten. And then you drag the node on the mask and plug both masks together on the node. And then you have both the dented and the cracked paint mask. Uh, for the dented, I forgot to plug the normals into the second layer. So it actually acts on the, on the second layer. Um, I usually play with the size and the scale uh, to make it like I want. So we can down the size a little bit to make it more uh, like bigger uh, impact on the generator. So yeah, probably something like that. Or yes, nice. So we check a little bit everywhere to make sure that it doesn't look weird. And we're good to go, I think. Yep. Now we're gonna add some dust. So this will be the third layer. I'm uh, gonna make it brownish, uh, like a dark brown. And we're gonna use the dust mask. The dust mask is under imperfection and dust here. So you drag the dust mask and you plug the mask into the mask of the second mix layer. Uh, you can control shift click on the dust mask to see what you're doing and the white parts will be the part where there will be dust. Here on the cylinder we see that it's not good because the rotation and the scale are not applied. So you need to apply the rotation and the scale on the object that are a little bit weird and you should see something like that. Um, so we have a little bit of dust here. We can play with the contrast and also the amount and this will increase the amount of dust that we have on the model. So it looks pretty good. Uh, usually when you have dust on the corner like that, you have more dust here that is accumulating. Um, so we're gonna use the mask cavity that you can find by pressing F and cavity mask. And we're gonna use the matte lighten to mix the dust layer with the cavity layer. And boom, we have it. Um, the problem here is that it's a little bit too strong. So we're gonna reduce it, the mask uh, strength. Something like that, yeah. And you see here, it's a, it's the straight line. Uh, so we can play with this texture input by plugging in a grunge texture. With the result, you plug it into the texture and now it's look a little bit more random. 
and more realistic. Uh, so we're gonna see the main uh, shader here to see the result. Uh, it's not too strong, so we're gonna increase it any a little bit more. So yeah, looks nice. Uh, you can check a little bit everywhere how it's acting. Um, this is usually in the cavities here, for example. Uh, you can play with the settings, and once you're happy with the strength, uh, you can actually go to the next step. So yeah, looking looking good. Okay, so I think we're good to go. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to make a grid with Fluent Materializer. So you select the plane, add the texture, basic material, we're gonna make it gray and metallic. Boom. Select the principal shader and we're gonna use the pattern. Here we're gonna use the grid circle pattern and we're gonna plug here the mask into the alpha channel that you can see in the bottom here. Uh, to see what we're doing, Control shift click on the mask, and we can tweak the settings to see what we're doing. So uh, it's actually using the alpha channel will allow us to see through the plane. So that's, that's pretty cool. If you check like on the other side, we can actually through see through the, the, the whole of the, the grid. So it's like a real geometry, but in reality, it's just a plane. So we can just play with the settings. Um, I think usually you don't change the offset. Uh, 1.5 is nice. We're gonna just play with the radius. This is like the whole size, like the radius of the circles that you can see here. So yeah, looking good. Now let's let's take through maybe like the pipe in the bottom. So for the pipe, we're gonna add a new material, select principal shader, press F and two layer shader. Uh, I'm gonna make it metallic and we're gonna add some dust. So we'll go to imperfection, dust, we plug the mask into the mask and we make it brownish like we did before. Good. So to make it a little bit more used, uh, we're going to use the grunges and grunge number three plug the normal into the normal of the first layer and now it looks a little bit more like used or damaged. Uh, I can play with the strength and the coverage to make it uh, more realistic and like you want. Um, I'm gonna actually mix the mask of the grunge and the mask of the dust with the matte latent uh, node uh, because I want to increase the dust on the places where it's more damaged. Uh, I'm gonna increase a little bit the amounts and play with the contrast to increase the dust here. So it's looking pretty good actually. Nice. So you can also uh, play with the roughness of the pipe by plugging the roughness into the first layer and play with the man minimum roughness and maximum roughness to make it like you want. So looks good. For the pipe ring, uh, we're gonna add a new material. For this one, we're gonna make it simple. Uh, just make it black and add some normal, um, probably just a grain node like that. 
plug the normal into the normal and we have like some kind of plastic that you can uh, use uh, I'm gonna use the grunge too and I'm gonna plug the normal into the normal stack of the grain so we can actually add the uh, normals together and play with the strength and the coverage to make it a little bit more damaged like that so it matched a little bit the damage that's uh, under the, the pipe so we're gonna apply the same material on the other side and we're good to go so now the last part uh, it's the grid for the grid uh, we're gonna use also simple method um, metallic gray and grunge we're gonna plug the roughness into the roughness and I think it looks good so we're uh, pretty lucky because it works uh, the first time so yeah that was it for today's video I hope you enjoyed this little uh, two-part tutorial where we did the modeling in the first part and texturing in the second part uh, if you do please let me know in the comment section and I will do more in the future and see you on the next one